Namaste, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. Hum ajay hey, kai say hey up. And today we're going to be reacting to How Big is Tata? Yes. And this is a company I had not heard of, but it says in parentheses that they own Jaguar. Now, I know the car Jaguar. Um, never got to drive in one. But I know it's a beautiful and ex very expensive car. Um, so this has been on our request list for quite some time. And um, uh, many of you have asked us to do this and we're finally getting to it. Yes. Um, so we're very excited. But we also wanted to let you know that we started our Patreon page. It's open and ready to go and um, ready for you guys to help support us so that we can continue doing this channel um, you know, continue, um, supporting the charity, some of the charities in India and, um, making this continue on for a long, long time. So, uh, hopefully you guys can help support us. So check out our Patreon page. It's listed down below. So when you go to make a comment, check it out and, uh, hit that like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already. And, uh, let's start up this video, Anjali. Let's see what Tata is all about. Yes. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. Over the past year, many times I've gotten the request to create a video production on the topic of Tata. At first, I didn't really see why there was such a demand, but as I learned more about the company, it became clear that there was something very unique here. I have to admit, before I completed the research, I really didn't know much about Tata, besides the fact that they made cars that were nowhere to be found in Australia, the US, and Europe. In fact, the only place I'd seen them was in India during my travels. Today, Tata now owns companies such as Jaguar and Land Rover, but this is really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the breadth of their industry yeah. activities. So how did Tata become the multinational giant that it is today? And well, just how big is it? Yeah. In this video, yeah, we'll so find cute. out. For it's those little, of you that are from Western nations and are probably unaware of this company, this video cute. may widen your perspectives a little. Let's begin. As far as modern day companies go, Tata is a very old company, older than the automobile, powered flight, and household electricity. The company was founded way back in 1868 by Jamset G, Nasirwanji, Tata. In retrospect, after Tata's success, some have hailed Jay Tata as one of the founders of modern India. Born in 1839, Jay Tata's first professional role was working in his father's banking firm outside of Mumbai, India, coincidentally where I was born. There were some key events in Jay Tata's life that would shape the history of India and eventually help shape the global business landscape. It would be travel that opened his eyes. Jay Tata traveled to England, America, and Europe for business, and through his opportunistic mind, he saw that Indian companies could make a large impact in the textile industry, which was dominated by the British at the time. In 1868, after learning from his time working in his father's banking firm, a 29-year-old Tata bought an old oil mill and converted it into a cotton mill. This seemingly insignificant event was the very beginning of the multinational giant. Jay Tata always had the inclination to care greatly for the people of India and had an interest in giving back. This is outlined by Jay Tata's four dream goals. During his life, Tata strived for four simple goals within his heart. They were to create an iron and steel company, a world-class education institution, a hotel, and a hydroelectric plant. It would only be the hotel that was to become a reality during Tata's life. It was completed one year before Jay Tata's death in 1903. In 1907, Tata's son, Dorab, would push to realize his dad's dream of Tata Steel, Asia's first and India's largest steel company. In 1911, the third dream was completed in the form of the Indian Institute of Science, the preeminent Indian institution for research and education in science and engineering. The final piece of Jay Tata's original dream was realized in 1915 when Dorab set up Tata Hydroelectronic Power Supply Company, now currently India's largest private electric company. So to do so many things in so little time may seem like immense innovation for the early 20th century, but there's a bigger picture to this. Tata as a company was thinking differently even when compared to global practice at the time. To give you an idea of how forward thinking Tata was for the time, 
They started the eight hour workday in 1912 and were one of the first companies in the world to implement the now standard practice. In 1917, the company introduced medical benefits for employees, a very advanced business concept for the time. Since Jay Tartar's founding of the company in 1868, the reins have been handed down to multiple generations. The company's DNA would ensure success in the future. Today, Tata operates 100 companies in more than 100 countries and exports to 150 countries. Wow, that's so that's all nice, but how big is Tata exactly and what do they do? Well, in 2014, the company made $103.27 billion in revenue in which 67% came from business outside of India. The Tata companies employ more than 581,000 people worldwide. That's more than Samsung Group, by the way. Tata is ranked 34th among the top 500 most valuable global brands according to Brand Finance's Global 500 2014 report. So that gives you an idea of financial size, but what do they do? Let's take a closer look at some of Tata's companies. We've got Tata Steel, Tata Motors, Consultancy Services, Chemicals, Global Beverages, Teleservices, Communications and Indian Hotels, Tata Ceramics, Power, Tata Starbucks, Tata Industry, Tata Sky, Landmark Bookstores, and the list goes on. And just to top it off, Tata actually owns the South Korean car manufacturer, Daewoo. But that isn't all. Tata has actually formed a habit of buying up British companies. It's rather ironic if you know the 19th and 20th century relations between India and Britain. In 2000, they bought up the British company Tetley T for $407 million. And then next, there was Jaguar and Land Rover in 2008 after the GFC for $2.3 billion. It's quite an interesting story. In 1999, Ratan Tata and his team were humiliated when they went to sell Tata's motor division to Ford due to a poor response after a launch of a hatchback, which happened to be Tata's first passenger car. The American Ford officials showed interest in taking over the company, but did so in a harsh manner. They told Tata, you did not know anything why did you start a passenger car division at all? They said they'll do Tata a favor by buying the car division. But as it turns out, the deal didn't end up going through between Tata and Ford. At the time, Ford owned Jaguar and Land Rover and couldn't really work out how to get the cars to sell. By 2008, things had gotten so bad that Ford had to sell Jaguar and Land Rover to the very company they had said a few years earlier were useless. Today, Tata has turned Jaguar and Land Rover around and sales are doing well in the US costs from Jaguar Land Rover. A quick uh, mention on the headline figures that we saw coming out from Tata Motors yesterday. Net profits have increased to $771 million. Net sales, on the other hand, have jumped 38% to about 63,000 uh, odd uh, crore rupees. Now, sales at Jaguar Land Rover have jumped 19%, driven largely because of the demand that we've seen coming in both from uh, the F-Type as well as the XG. Okay, so far in terms of size, Tata may sound like a few other multinational conglomerates, but the surprising difference here is that Tata is actually very successful in many of their fields. For instance, Tata Communications is the world's largest wholesale voice carrier, and Tata Motors is among the top five commercial vehicle manufacturers in the world. Their steel division is among the top 10 best steel makers. The communication yeah, services good. division is among the top 10 global IT service companies. The global beverages division is the second largest tea company in the world. And their chemical division is the world's second largest manufacturer of soda ash, which is used for the manufacturing of glass. Another aspect which makes Tata different, and one of the reasons why I've grown to appreciate them, at least as a company, is their nature. Tata carries on its founders caring attitude and as a result they have a sort of self-imposed moral obligation. What do I mean by this? The company has actually made it a habit to return some of its wealth to society, mainly through providing investments back into the local economy. This is not only true within India, but in many countries around the globe. Tata is also very active in philanthropy. Through its trusts, the company gives back in areas of medical research, technology, science, education, social welfare, and healthcare. One example is the Tata Swatch, a compact in-home purification device that costs less than 21 US dollars. The idea of the Tata Swatch came to being from the 2004 tsunami, which left thousands of people without clean drinking water. The device has filters that last about one year for a family of five. The advantage of this device is that it does not require any electricity and is very low cost. 
Due to activities like this, in 2009, the Tata Group was ranked number 11 in the world's top 100 reputable companies by Forbes magazine. So there you have it, a true multinational conglomerate with a bit of difference. All in all, it's amazing that just one man could leave a legacy that has lasted over a century. Let's finish off with a quote from Jay Tata himself. In a free enterprise, the community is not just another stakeholder in the business, but in fact, the very existence of it. What he said rings as true today as it did over 100 years ago. Companies really need to listen to their communities and users. And one last cool fact, Jay Tata has even founded a city in India that now has over 1.3 million people. I hope you enjoyed that video about the history and size of Tata. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. This is amazing. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I did not realize, A, I don't think I've ever even heard this company, Tata. Not at all. I know. You guys probably think I live in a bubble right now. Damn. But that it's that huge, that worldwide. And, and we don't learn about it. Yeah, Angie's like, I haven't heard about this company in No school. idea what it was. So that is amazing that this company is huge. Yeah. And not only is it so big, but it also gives back to the community. You know, they're um, finding ways to give back to the people in their communities that they have these companies, which is amazing, you know, but in good ways, like giving back to education, mm -hmm. teaching people new things or showing them how to make stuff that will make their lives easier. Um, you know, just amazing. Especially that um, filter that they got. That water filter. That would is help amazing. in um, Michigan, which is still going on lead poisoning in water. Right. Yeah, that's a big thing here. Uh, Flint, Michigan has like um, really bad water going yeah. on, and it's been going on for many years right now. And uh, yeah, that would be something that they could use because it was inexpensive. It lasted what a year. Yeah, and a year for five people. Yeah. So but, imagine what it could do for one person. Exactly. Well, and even that, like, the fact that they were thinking, like, what can we make that will help these people that were in this tsunami mm -hmm. that don't have really good drinking water and for who knows how long it would take for them to get everything back on their feet. And this was something that they invented that helped them, which is amazing. But it's also one of those things you think, wow, everybody could use that. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, just, it's, it's, and the other thing that blows me away is how they treat their employees. Like, how they treat their employees is awesome. And that it went back that far. Like, I would never have known that you know, he invented the eight-hour workday. And we learned about it in school, but we didn't learn about him who, or who did it. Right. Who started it? Yeah. Nobody told you Gemma Seti G. Tata was the one who invented the eight-hour workday. Yeah, we don't hear a lot about these wonderful Indian inventors and um, who start these things. And then I feel like we hear about maybe years down the road when you know, an English inventor, an American inventor has probably taken that information and turned it into their own invention and mm -hmm. made it into something else, like the radio. Yeah. There was an Indian inventor that invented the radio sound wave, the, the radio waves, like the sound waves, and then somebody, you know, invented the radio, but really the invention should have gone um, to India. And so just unbelievable and that they even started like health insurance way back then like yeah. that's still some big thing here like that companies don't always offer health insurance if you don't work enough hours if depending on the job you work for and health insurance has always been a huge issue the fact that it's been going on you know for a hundred years for this company is amazing and that they keep that you know it's been generations four generations now it seems like yeah of you know son and then grandchildren and then great grandchild have taken over this company and it's still living and breathing. Um, I feel like the way he wanted it to at the beginning, you know, it got all the things, his four goals that he wanted. He only got to see one, but the four goals ended up, you know, taking generations to come true. Yeah. But now, you know, it has and it's just amazing.
my other favorite part of this is how they took over a bunch of British companies yeah. um, and bought them out, which was amazing, especially Tetley Tea. And I actually love Tetley Tea. We buy a lot of that um, at the local Indian shop. But uh, the chai flavor, <laughs> ginger chai flavor is my favorite. Um, side note. But that was awesome. And then the other was the... Um, the Ford company that told them that they didn't know what they were doing and that they were wasting their time mm-hmm. and then had to sell their uh, Jaguar and Range Rover to Tata uh, later because they didn't know what they were doing. And now the sales are up. So I thought that was awesome as well. They are yeah. doing a great job. And so awesome. And I can't believe yeah. we didn't, A, know about it and B, watch it sooner. Um, so thanks for suggesting it. Keep sending us those comments and the links, um, you know, the list is humongous and we try to, you know, go through, we can only do so many with work and school, um, with the kids as best we can, but don't worry. Our list is there. We, we just have to get through it. And, um, don't forget to subscribe to our wonderful family and join us on Facebook and Twitter and what else on G? don't forget to subscribe didn't i just say that no i don't know (laughs) you paying attention yeah (laughs) how about uh patreon that's what it was oh yeah tell them about patreon so if you go on patreon we have this new patreon page and you can sign up to give us new comments not comments but (laughs) you're so cute um yeah you can sign up and there's different levels, so depending on what you're willing to donate to the Jan Family Channel and to help support us so we can keep doing this and we can keep growing and getting bigger and bigger. And hopefully this will become my full-time job and not my second job. Um, and we can also give back to the community. So that's our plan. So there are a few things up there. We're going to get some more. We need to put some more links. I want to put stuff that's been blocked on YouTube, if I can, up there so you guys can see it, like Vachin Day, Angie's favorite song, if you guys haven't seen it already. And um, so, yeah, if you can support us, please do join us on Patreon. If not, send our links around, get your friends and family to subscribe, because by the end of this year, I want, we want, as a family, we want to reach our goal is 75,000 subscribers. And I think with all your help, we can do that, right? Yes. And some great links that you keep sending our way. So, hope you guys enjoy this, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.